Welcome. I wanted to start off by saying thank you for watching my videos. In this video, we're going to cover a general overview of what this project is going to be all about. We're going to give you a little bit of an intro to Autodesk Revit, and we're going to start making some exterior walls. So what is this project? I'm going to walk you through the basics of Autodesk Revit, and we're going to make this shed like you see here. From there, I'm going to also be showing you how to create drawings. So we're going to be making a working set of drawings like you see here with some window and door schedules, elevations, site plan. So we're going to make a set of working drawings as well. And that is my quick overview of this project. So let's introduce you to Revit. Let me just close this out. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up Autodesk Revit on your desktop. It looks like this big blue R. I'm currently using Revit 2019. If it's not on your desktop, you may need to go navigate and locate it. Uh, it may be in your Autodesk folder here. And if you scroll down, you will see Revit 2019. You can also drag that right onto your desktop to create that shortcut for yourself. Once the software loads and opens up, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. And to get started, we're going to go ahead and start a new project. So I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to click on Project. From there, I'm going to click this Template drop-down menu, and I'm going to choose an Architectural Template. What this does is it you know, has a lot of presets for you within the architectural industry um, and saves you some time. And then I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> and before we jump into anything in here in Revit, one of the first things you want to do after starting a new project is uh, maintain good file management and proper saving conventions. So what I like to do is just do a File Save As right off the bat. I'm going to save as a project. And then you will need to navigate where you want to save it to. For my classes, you could save in your student folder and make a new folder called Shed Project. Um, for right now, for the demonstration purposes, I am going to just save on the desktop in a new folder on here. But you're going to save in your um, proper location. So once you get the folder and you navigate into that folder, then you can go ahead and give the project a name. So I'm just going to call mine Shed Project. Get rid of all this extra stuff. There we go. And then I'm going to hit Save. As soon as you save it, you'll notice up top it's renamed the file and we are all set to go. If you've had me in class before and you've been in any other Autodesk software, the layout is going to look fairly similar to Autodesk's other softwares. You're going to notice the quick access toolbar up at the top of the screen where you're going to see things like open, save, undo, redo, print, etc. Right below that is called the ribbon, and within that ribbon there's different um, options for the ribbon. You have an architecture ribbon, structure ribbon, steel ribbon, systems, and so on. So I'm just going to click back into the architecture. On the left-hand side of the screen, you're going to notice a properties panel where you can edit different things, and then below you're going to see a project browser. So this is where we'll navigate to different... Um, plans within our drawing or our space and then in the middle here is your workspace and then you also have um, a view control bar down on the bottom of the screen here and that's where you can change things like scale and different view options like wireframe or um, you know realistic and things like that if you ever lose your ribbon up top it may be because you've accidentally clicked this minimize panel button. What this does, it gives you some different viewing options for your ribbons. Sometimes people like a little bit more real estate where you just hover over and they expand. 
So if you notice um, that stuff starts disappearing, just click this little arrow and you can cycle through the different viewing options for um, the various ribbons up at the top of the screen. To start off, we're going to navigate to the project browser over on the left hand side of the screen. So you'll see floor plans, ceiling plans, elevations, and so on. For right now, we're going to dive into the elevations. And if you don't know what an elevation view, it's uh, pretty much like a side view of the structure. And we're going to start with the east. So I'm going to double click on east. As soon as I do that, the first thing I want you to notice is that a new tab is opened. And I'm now in the east um, elevation. And then you'll also notice that we have level 1, which is at 0 feet dash 0 inches, and level 2, which is at 10 feet 0 inches. So we're going to go ahead and make some changes to level 2. To zoom in, I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel forward. To pan, you can left click hold the mouse wheel and move your mouse, and it'll pan. That way you can kind of zoom in where you want to go. And I'm going to change level 2. So I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to change that to roof because that's level two is going to represent where our roof is at. Since our shed is only one story, this top level is going to represent our roof. So I'm going to left click off of that. Um, yes, I do want that to occur. So I want to rename that. And then the other thing is I don't want it to be 10 feet tall. I actually want it to be eight feet. So I'm going to click into there and I'm going to type in eight feet dash zero inches hit enter on the keyboard and has now moved that level down which is where my roof is going to be to eight feet and you should get in the habit of saving often so I'm going to go up and click the little save button up here in my quick access toolbar let's go ahead and navigate back to level one which is where we initially started when we opened up Revit you can do it two ways you can either go in your project browser on the left here and click on level one, or you can go up top since it has already been opened and we can click back into level one. Level one is a top view. So we're looking at the top of the structure right now of level one. And if you remember, if I go back to the east, level one is at zero feet dash zero inches, zero inches. So you can kind of imagine that as like ground level. So that's what we're looking at from a top view in level one. So click back into that. We're going to go to the architecture ribbon, which we're already in, and I'm going to click on wall. As soon as you click on wall, you're going to notice that your properties panel has changed and it is switched to the wall tool. There's a drop down menu here where you can navigate up or scroll up and down and you can see the different types of walls that are loaded within the Autodesk library here in Revit. And we're going to start with a exterior brick on metal stud. So if you scroll, you can find that. It looks like this. Now, the only thing is, is I don't want metal studs for my shed. So we actually need to edit this wall. So to do that, I'm going to click on edit type within the properties panel. And then you get this type properties window that pops up. Now, if I edit this wall right away, it's going to edit this wall, you know, throughout the rest of the project. So what I would like to do actually is make a duplicate of the wall and then edit that duplicate. So to do that, I'm going to click on duplicate. And then I am going to rename that exterior dash shed wall. And then I'm going to click OK. And now that we have the duplicate made in the new name, now I'm going to edit that structure. So here is the structure under the construction area. So I'm going to click on edit. And then I'm going to click this little preview button. What that does is it you're seeing a section view of the brick wall. And then here you're seeing all the different layers of that wall. So for example, it starts with the brick. Then you have a... Um, air or thermal air layer and so on down the line as you look through this list 
And the other thing I want to change besides just the metal studs, I really don't want brick. I'd rather have uh, like a vinyl siding or a, sign a siding um, on the exterior of the wall. So I'm going to get rid of this brick. So to do that, I'm going to highlight this and select it, and then I'm going to hit delete. And that's going to remove the brick from the wall. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on the insert button to add a new structure up top. And for the function, I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to drop this menu down. And we're going to do click on this Finish 1-4 option. And then for the category here, I'm going to click these three little dots. So we're going to adjust the material. So I'm going to click the three little dots. And then your material browser is going to pop up. And what we're going to do right away, down here on the bottom, there's a create um, duplicate uh, material. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the little drop down menu and click create new material. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click and rename it. And I'm going to call it siding. Hit enter on the keyboard to confirm that. And then down on the bottom, I'm going to click the open slash closes asset browser. And this is like a huge library of all of Autodesk materials that we're going to about to search. So up top in the search bar, I'm going to type in siding and hit enter and then it's going to locate some siding for me it'll have a list of options here we have some clapboard some horizontal six inch beige and we have some wood shingle uh, siding that popped up and for this project I'm going to go with this one so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click these two little arrows to insert it and I'm going to go ahead and close that and now you notice that the siding has that material on it. And then I'm going to simply click OK. And then now I have the siding material in there. But right now the thickness is currently set to zero. So I want to change that to a half inch and hit enter on the keyboard. And now I have a half inch siding on the exterior of my shed wall. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this number two thermal air layer. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click delete. And now we're going to change from a metal stud to a wood stud. So to do that for structure number five here, or row five, I'm going to click into the metal stud layer right here. And then I'm going to click the three little dots to pull that up. And in the material browser search bar here, I'm going to type in lumber, hit enter, and then I'm going to double click on this soft lumber. And now that has added it instead of the, uh, the metal stud. And we need to change the size of that lumber to represent our 2x4s. So we're going to change the thickness of that to 4 inches and hit enter on the keyboard like you see there. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on number seven here. Uh, actually, I want to highlight the whole thing. So I'm going to click the number and then I want to move that up. So it's right underneath number two. So I'm going to click the up arrow or the up button. I'm sorry, and move that up to right there underneath the membrane layer right there. Then I'm going to simply click OK. And then OK again. So now we have that edited exterior shed wall ready to go in our properties panel and I'm gonna go ahead and do another quick save and we're gonna before we can start drawing our walls we also want to make a few modifications up here we want to make sure that it is going to the roof and we don't want 20 foot tall walls and for some reason, this it just hasn't updated on your screen. When we start drawing, this will switch back to 8 feet. I just did a quick test. 
and it worked fine. So I know yours says 20 right now. Just keep going with me and we'll we'll get this going. Next, we're going to switch the location line. We want that to say finish face exterior. So we're going to be drawing along the finished face of the exterior of the wall. And then we're going to go ahead and start drawing our exterior walls. And we're going to make sure that I'm in between these four little arrows. We'll talk about those later on. And the first line we're going to be drawing is 10 feet long. So I'm going to just left click, let go with my mouse, and move directly to the right. And I'm going to type in 10 feet. And then I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard. Then I'm going to move my mouse directly down. And this time I'm going to type in 9 feet dash 4 inches. Enter on the keyboard. Move my mouse directly to the right. Now, I could type in the 10 feet, but I'm going to zoom in here so you can see us a little bit better. I could type in the 10 feet, but as soon as I move my mouse to the left, you'll notice that it's referencing the wall above. So as soon as it does that, I'm going to click, and it just created my 10-foot wall for me. And then I'm going to move my mouse directly up, and then I'm going to left-click and just close this off right here, and then right-click cancel to get out of it. So I did 10 feet, 9 foot 4, 10 feet, and then I just closed it off. Now notice that it's still trying to snap to different things. That's because I'm still in the wall tool. If you want to get out of a tool, hit escape on the keyboard. Notice that it changed up top, and I now am the uh, properties panel is now back into the regular floor plan. If you did want to go back into that and fix something, you could simply just dub, whoops, undo that, control Z. You could just simply double click on it or click on it and make your adjustments. And you'll notice that when I do click on those that my numbers are a little different, but that's because it's measuring from center to center of the walls. If you remember when we drew the walls, we were drawing them from the finished face exterior. So that's why the numbers look a little different right now when I'm clicking on them. And that is the end of this video. The last thing I'm going to do is a quick save. And in the next video, we will add a floor.